Let me go to another uh, issue of diagnosis. So we're, we're been talking about differentiating pancreatic and carcinoid, but there's another increasingly important way that we classify neuroendocrine tumors, and that's by, by histologic grade. Uh, so let me turn back to you, uh, Rod, uh, with regard to the histologic classification system. Uh, could you just sort of take us through that a little bit and describe how we think about low grade and intermediate grade, high grade type Certainly. tumors? The, um Another thing that we frequently see on pathology reports we get is that there is no grade. And we have to view those as unacceptable and uh, either have the slides reviewed or go back to the original pathologist and, and ask them to please grade the tumor because it makes a, a critical difference. There are high grade or poorly differentiated neuroendocrine tumors and they do not have the favorable prognosis that we're going to be discussing today. Those behave much more like a small cell lung cancer and um, they do not respond to debulking surgery and these types of agents. So it's based on the mitotic count or sometimes a KI-67, and there are different schemes that have been proposed by the World Health Organization and ENETS, and, and the, which is the European Neuroendocrine Tumor Society, and NANETS, which is the North American Neuroendocrine Tumor Society. <clears throat> but generally, if you have a mitotic count that is uh, less than 10, that will be a low-grade tumor, and 10 to 20 will be an intermediate-grade tumor, and then greater than 20 gives it a, a high grade. So, Dan, I think your center has been one of the leaders in trying to define the histologic grading system. Right. Uh, and uh, Rod was talking about the mitotic count as being one key piece of that. Uh, another increasingly key piece is the KI-67, or proliferative index. Can you t tell us a little bit about how you use that? Right, absolutely. So. Um, as my pathology colleagues at Memorial have really pioneered um, some of the classification systems that we've had, they've taught me, you know, what the cancer looks like under the microscope really can help us uh, define how a patient may, may do. Um, so they typically look at two things when they're looking at the microscope, as you explained. So the first thing is the architecture, what those cells look like, and that's our differentiation. So well-differentiated tumors, as you said, are very mature-looking cells as opposed to the poorly differentiated carcinomas um, that are really a separate entity that were more consistent with the small cell paradigm, which we're obviously not talking about today. More platinum-based treatments is what we use, as you said. Um, so amongst those uh, tumors that are well um, differentiated or mature looking cells by the architecture, you have these low grade and intermediate grade. And how to define that has been sort of a matter of debate of whether you use KI-67 um, or whether you use the number of mitoses per hyper field. Uh, it turns out, as you said, that the, up until recently, the KI-67 greater than 20% was consistent with high grade. Uh, but we know that there are many tumors that may have this well-differentiated architecture um, with a KI-67 around 20%, and they certainly will not act and behave as a poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma, which is a high grade of, say, 80 to 90% KI-67. So um, recent data suggests that a KI-67 around 55% um, meaning 55% or higher are the ones that are sort of the, quote, bad actors. Um, and a KI-67, perhaps less than 55%, um, has a better prognosis. But interestingly, those tumors with a KI-67 less than 55% um, really don't respond as well to these platinum-based therapies. So the question really does arise, do we yet need, um, do we yet again need to sort of redefine this classification system of the high-grade tumors? I think we've all seen uh, patients coming in uh, treated with platinum-based therapy because uh, under the new classification system, they are technically high grade, but they are just not behaving that way. Uh, so one of the, the key take-home messages here uh, is that we, we really need to be using our clinical judgment uh, in identifying the patients that are really candidates for platinum-based therapy. Exactly, yeah, um, and often, for example, I'll use an octreotide scan um, because if it's positive on octreotide and they have the somatostatin receptor, typically those patients, even with a high K KI-67, again, they're uh, less likely to respond to platinum-based therapies and, in fact, may do well. So that's another sort of imaging I sometimes use.